is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, so that no one can boast. God's richest blessings as you consider those blessings from your God, the forgiveness of sins, the certainty, the living hope, right? The certainty of heaven with him forever. This morning, I want to focus just on the first verse of our first lesson, verse 15 of 1 Peter chapter 3. Uh, Let us begin uh, with a prayer. Heavenly Father, send us your Holy Spirit that you strengthen our faith in your amazing love and forgiveness, and that you might also strengthen us in our lives of service, that we can find many opportunities to thank you uh, for all that you have done for us. You will do that, O Lord, as you have promised, through the power of your word and through your sacrament. Thank you for that gift of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations. That's what a team loves to hear at the end of the championship game. Or the retiring co-worker at the end of his final 10, 12-hour shift. Congratulations, you made it. Or maybe it's the young couple who have maneuvered their ways through all the real estate business and they finally have in their hands their first set of keys. Well, it's also something we hear quite a bit uh, this time of the year, right? Certain young people and maybe even older people, they have attained that certain level of knowledge. They've passed all the tests that they needed to pass They kind of have all the answers that they need to get that diploma. And so now life can move on. Unfortunately, uh, that congratulating accolade, uh, that pat on the back, the sigh of relief, the sense of accomplishment just doesn't last all that long. Soon, uh, sooner rather than later, perhaps, eighth graders will realize well, we're going to be low people on the totem pole once again, the lowly freshmen. I asked Caitlin the other day, uh, Friday was her last day of school, and I said, are you excited? This is your last day of being a freshman. And she said, sure I am. Right. Uh, the senior in high school, right, they're excited uh, because they're done, but soon they realize Well, now it's college academics, it's college living, it's being away from mom and dad, perhaps, for the first time. Or uh, maybe uh, Josh can uh, attest to us, a senior in college, graduating, oh, now I have to get a job. (laughs) And I can't just ask mom for money or dad for money because I'm supposed to be responsible now. And then even the retired person, right? You, you've retired, you, you've, you've hanged up your briefcase, uh, you don't have to open up your laptop anymore, uh, but there's still questions, right? Now what do I do? Or what's going to happen when I get sick and how are we going to pay the bills? I'm on a fixed income. As much as we like to think that maybe we have all the answers Uh, at least we know enough to get by, we realize that every turn of life has different questions, important things that we still have to learn, right? Things that are crucial and critical to sometimes our survival in this world. The Apostle Peter in his letter uh, was addressing throughout his letter the problems and the struggles that his brothers and sisters in Christ were having Namely, or uh, directly because they were Christians, right? They had committed their lives to Christ, uh, but they were experiencing some grueling things, and just the thought of what might happen uh, made them worn out. But throughout the letter, Peter is sort of congratulating them. You've made it, right, through that latest session of suffering. You've made it through another day, and that's something to, be, to celebrate, that you're still a child of God and you realize the beauty of your Savior. Good job. Keep it up. But following these accolades, Peter always goes back to, in his letter, some instructions for Christian living, and maybe in a way saying, well, it's great that you made it, but there's more. And it's still going to take a little bit more work on your part Uh, to keep that commitment. And obviously through the Spirit, a person would do that. 
But these instructions for Christian living, as we know, it's a thank you to God that how we can live in a certain way. Um, these instructions from Peter actually become sort of this wall that protects us from spiritual danger, right? If we're living as a Christian, that means we're aware of our surroundings and, and how the devil might tempt us and lure us away. Uh, but also our Christian living is to serve as uh, sort of a way, you know, we're, we're royal priesthood that we declare God's praises to the people around us that they also might see the light that has uh, kind of blessed our lives. If we're not following these rules and these instructions, there is the danger, the spiritual danger, of losing the certainty of knowing what's going to happen to us when we die. And more important, or just as important, it's uh, a lack of honoring God's name. And the way we live actually can turn people away or turn people off of Christianity. So as loving as Peter is and concerned as he is for these Christians, he, he's also quite uh, firm with them uh, that these instructions are important for you. As you maneuver your way through life, as you face different struggles each and every day, as you are tested in your faith. And so this is what Peter says just in the beginning of this section, verse 15. He says, in your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. And with this command, he's telling them, well, don't, don't just think about what you're going to say or think about how you're going to respond to a certain situation. It's actually a lot firmer in that he's saying, do this. And when he says set apart, he has, you know, show your reverence for Jesus and what you think of Jesus and how much you appreciate him by what you do and by how you talk to each other. And then he goes on to explain, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Peter wants us, God wants us to constantly be ready to explain why we're so excited about Jesus and why we're not afraid to die. And Peter reminds us that if we live as a Christian, living in a sinful world, that means people are going to ask us questions because we're going to look differently and we're going to talk differently. And sometimes those questions are out of curiosity. They're, they're seeking what we have. But other times we know uh, it's a ploy to sort of make fun of us. Um, we know that these questions sometimes originate in our own fears and doubts. And sometimes they're directly coming from the evil one himself who is constantly working to chip away at the foundation of that hope that you have in Christ. There, there are those questions. Uh, are you sure that God has forgiven you? Are you sure that you're going to heaven? You've never seen Jesus before. Or there's the questions um, that, well, what makes you better than all the rest of us? That God loves you, and, and you, you treat us like we're kind of some outsiders. I've seen the way that you behave sometimes. And, and I've heard the way that you talk, right, uh, when you're at the movie theater or uh, when you're at the pool. There's those questions that people always have of, well, what kind of God... Can you call a loving God when he allows horrible, terrible things to happen to people? People he supposedly loves, his own people. Sometimes I think we can view the life of a Christian like taking a test every day or multiple tests every day. And Peter is saying, you always have to be ready uh, to answer the questions on the test. We already know some of the questions, but there's always those pop quizzes. And there's always questions that get thrown at us. They weren't on the study guide. And we think we don't have to know what the answers are. Peter's reminding us that even though we might pass the test day to day, we might sort of graduate in our maturity of faith, but he also is reminding this is a constant thing of learning and that we never graduate from Bible school. Because we can expand, we can expand our book knowledge because that translates into taking action in our faith and learning from experience. And all of those things God uses to help us grow and to protect us, but also 
to be that light in the dark, sinful world. Peter closes out this, this, in, this direction in verse 15 uh, with the last couple words. He says, do all these things, be ready to answer and to share the hope that you have with gentleness and respect. Now, respect might not be the best word here. It has the idea that you are acutely aware of your surroundings, so be ready to answer these questions acutely aware of the devil's plot to destroy you. Be acutely aware of the spiritual needs of the people around you, the, the people who live next to you, the, the people you work with, uh, the people uh, that you might uh, sort of meet out in public. Finally, we can think of this from the standpoint of being acutely aware that to live as a Christian means you're going to look differently. And you're going to stick out, and people are going to ask you questions for many different reasons. And so Peter says, do this with respect, be aware, but also with gentleness. Um, Reminding me of a, a verse in Proverbs, King Solomon once wrote, a harsh word stirs up anger, but a gentle answer turns away wrath. As hard as it is, as much as we want to fight back, the directions from God are to give a reason for the hope that you have with respect and gentleness. Because that's the key to luring and drawing people in in a very good way, that they can see the hope that you have in the beautiful love of your Savior. As we get ready to have confirmation in the second service, I think even today in the first service, we can recognize that really every day is sort of a confirmation day. Uh, It's God's word that strengthens us, that confirms us in the hope that we have. And and so we can have a congratulations each and every day as we survive through the power of God's word, the work of the spirit. Uh, Maybe a, a couple alleluias, praise the Lord. Right, uh, thankful for the gift of the Holy Spirit, faith that we have to see Jesus as our Savior, the fact that the Holy Spirit is going to continue to work in our hearts and lives through God's Word and through the sacrament, the fact that He allows us to pass these tests, to have these answers, uh, and it's all based upon that joy and that hope of Easter. And we've been talking about the leftovers, right, of the Easter festivities, uh, the leftovers are having all the answers that we need to life's biggest problems. And those answers come by grace alone, as we just say, or by faith alone, as we just saying, that we know through Jesus we have forgiveness. The answers come by grace alone, that God loves us anyways, and he says, because I live, you also will live forever with him in heaven. The answers to all of life's biggest questions as we look into scriptures, they assure us that God is with us. And when that day comes, we will be confirmed in holiness forever as we receive that crown of life. This just summarizes all the answers that you have, that you need, found in scriptures. And God has given them to you. And God promises that as you use his word, you will be renewed in your commitment to serve him and to follow him. So may he grant us the strength uh, to constantly review what we've learned, but also to remember the need to grow in what we want to learn. And finally, uh, that we renew our commitment each and every day, uh, which will only bring us joy because a renewal Uh, A renewal of commitment means we're thinking about, we're aware of our surroundings, of of who our Savior is, and the wonderful job he gives to us uh, to be his servants here on earth while we wait for heaven. May God bless you as you consider the fact that you have all the answers you need, and they're found in scriptures, they're yours, and you get to enjoy that for the rest of your life as you grow. God grant you that through the power of his spirit. Amen. Please stand.
The peace of God which surpasses our human understanding will keep and guard your hearts through faith in Jesus, through the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen.